Fly Like a Dolphin by Rob Passman. One of the first things he said to me, or for any of the other crap about the fixes and fiddles and scams that he runs, I always get well, he said. I always make money. My greed is more powerful than anything else. Step one. Look at yourself. Look yourself in the eyes. I glance at myself in the polished chrome pillar I'm leaning against and then back down at the crumpled script in my hand lit by tawdry phone light. I'm stood in the middle of a newly developed plaza. There's some nice mosaic paving in a cinema and a water feature that looks ill at ease with its surroundings despite those frolicking spurts of water that bounce between hidden nozzles. The excessive lighting in the square makes each of the exits more ominous. Menace seems to lurk outside this oasis of regeneration. I read on. Step two. Look yourself in eyes. You is strong. You is man. Step two seems remarkably similar to step one, <laughs> but I do as I'm told. I don't look strong. I don't look man. I, I look weak. Not like Mariusz, the man whose broken English rings around my head. Mariusz would never be nervous. Mariusz is better than me, and he knows it. I turn back to the street. Gentrification verges in Walthamstow but hasn't bloomed. These are still Marius's streets. They were as soon as he got off the boat. Step three. You know, he's written my name here, but as I don't want you to know my name, we'll call me A4, because that's what he calls me. You know, A4. There is appreciation in my side for you, because in my side, I feel that we have the bond, the adhesive trust bond. You are doing these things because I have wisdomed you, but you must be adhesive to that wisdom. And you are. You trust, and it is transcendental to me. <laughs> now, Therefore, spot yourself a place next to the machine. I have engineered for you a drawing to enable such position. On the page, a rudimentary sketch with an X in the middle reflects the point at which I am stood. Mariusz is still learning to write English, but as he explains to me, he doesn't need to be taught. No one can teach him anything. He does, however, own a thesaurus. <laughs> Step four. Now you must be picking the mark. Ah, screw you cogitating and screw you tenses. You know what I mean, A4. I am the colossus of literature. Like your Shakespeare, but significant amount less homosexual. <laughs> Pick the mark. Pick the mark now. Let's get this show on the road. And light up cigarette, so you can be uh, distinguished from paedophile. <laughs> I look around for a suitable victim and accidentally catch the eye of a middle-aged man coming out of the cinema with his two children. I light the cigarette. Mariusz is right, it's okay to hang around outside looking shifty if you're smoking. The notion that I have to actively avoid looking like a paedophile outside a family-friendly entertainment venue brings me to how I got here. There are times when you're on your own and you want a coffee, and you walk into a place thinking you can just get a coffee. When that place is on the edges of London and there's no Starbucks, it could be some place like the place I walked into. 
he was sat at the table. I wasn't even sure if he worked there. What do you want? He said. Uh, flat white, I said. Like you, <laughs> he said. You're a flat white. <laughs> You're A4. I'm not A4, he said. Like paper, <laughs> he said. Then he stopped laughing. You motherfucker, he said. Sit down, A4. <laughs> and kicked out a chair. That's how I met Mariusz. <laughs> he didn't work there. Get this motherfucker a flat white, he shouted. Without the flat. <laughs> and without the white. When the coffee was placed in front of me, it looked like treacle. Mariusz was just staring. You know, um, my friends come to this country and stand outside your fucking weak superstore on the Seven Sisters Road and wait to be picked up by any bargain basement construction fuck who want cheap labor without paying the taxes. You know what we get for that work? For standing in a car park and getting in the back of any van that comes along? Less than minimum wage. You know how many men I know got in the back of a van and didn't get back out of it? You know who cares? I didn't know what to say. Uh, no, I said. What do you do, A4? That you is able to wander around Walthamstow in the middle of the day? No worries for you. I'm a freelance writer. <laughs> I too am a writer, A4. I am much vocabulary. Oh, good, I said. I only write for accountancy periodicals. I, I, I'm not a proper writer. I just moved here. How much you make uh, periodically writing about accounts? Uh, not much. That's why I had to move out here. So, uh, how you uh, keep your woman in the stars to which she is accustomed? I don't. I don't have a woman. Where are you from? Hampstead. So you like the homosexual, yes? No, 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 I'm not homosexual. I, I'm just single. Don't you want a woman? I suppose. So what are you doing about? I don't know, uh, dating websites. You English pricks with your dating sites and slippers. Get some balls. Pig balls. You make no money. That's why you rely on your hand for onanism, yet you pay a dating site? I tell you how to get a woman. And I'll relieve you of some money for the trouble, but at least my methodology will be the success. You tell me what kind of woman you like it for. Other than the ladyboys, yes. <laughs> but first, we smoke. We've been smoking shisha layered with weed through a hookah for about four hours. <laughs> when one of his mates got so fucked he fell head first into a table when trying to stand up. He came up pumping blood out of an eyebrow. The rest of them fell about. I couldn't help but smirk. Now you are sore, <laughs> laughed Mariusz. You sore like an eagle. <laughs> No, no, no. It's not the same saw. <laughs> I began, but swiftly gave up. I had little recollection of anything that had taken place other than giving Marius ten pounds for the benefit of his extensive knowledge. So, A4, now I have your money. You come back tomorrow and I give you your instructions. Oh, I said... Okay. Step five. You pick one yet, A4? Let me incrementally support you in these travets. You have two sorts. One. 
You have to be quick with this one. She's coming from the bus stop or the tubular train. She's going straight for it. No messing around. When you see her, you must be instantaneously decisioning. She's not hanging around. Two. She is different. Wandering around. Probably waiting for someone. You know with her, when she check her phone, then she check her purse, then you know. So, which one is it, A4? Who will it going to be? As an interesting aside at this time, I should henceforth enable you with the additional anecdote of my grandfather and grandmother and the momentous occasion of their initial coupling. When my grandfather was young and virile, and he first saw my grandmother, he was very excited in his loins. For she was overly sumptuous, a shape of ladiness. He was not inactive in his pursuiting. He did not cogitate excessively. He went to my grandmother and he said to her, you are a thing of divine arousal. I would want you and I would like to take you to the pictures and woo you not inconsiderably this very evening at 7 p.m. <laughs> and she agreed. And later that very evening at 6.50 p.m. he was early to meet her because he was supernaturally excited. <laughs> so excited that his little man was no longer able to remain little. <laughs> While he was waiting, another girl walked by. Any girl, not divine like my grandmother, and indeed, according to my grandfather, this other girl was particularly abhorrent to behold. How you say, ugly like uh, Chewy the Brick? But my grandfather was so inflamed in the sex stick that he went with this beastly wench and missed the appointment liaison with my grandmother altogether. Oh no, you would cry. How will it now come to pass that my grandfather and grandmother will be adhesive eternally in the bonds of love? <laughs> and you would be correct to cry because as it eventually came to pass, my grandfather never saw my grandmother again. That beastly wench that he went with instead because he could not wait ten minutes. It was she who was indeed my actual grandmother. <laughs> like you say, the early bird catches the worm, yes. Except the bird is an ugly woman and the worm is a dick. <laughs> I ask my grandfather if that is why me and my brothers are all as ugly as Chewy the Brick. And he says yes. But then he hits me in the eye and says that even though my grandmother is ugly as Chewy the Brick, it is very insulting to him to say so. As my grandfather now always says, pick wisely and with unanimity a four. I pick my mark. She loiters, lit up by the lights that spread a comforting glow from above. She's waiting for someone. She just doesn't know it's me yet. I chose her because she's wandering. A number two for marriage. It's cold. But I like what I can see of her wrapped up face. And the way she playfully twists the zip in her fingers, summons feelings of... Shared jokes whispered into ears, lips touching, and uh, I, I get ahead of myself. The next day, today, when I went back to pick up the envelope I paid ten pounds for, Marius had a black eye. He wore it well. It just made him look more menacing. I told you I'd get money out of you, he said and whacked me playfully around the face with my purchase. It stung, but I, I tried to hide it. This is your nine steps to a healthy fuck life, he said. <laughs> so, uh, Marish, I asked, feeling the barriers between our respective cultures had broken down. Uh, 
What exactly is it that you do? I'm a landlord, A4. Whose landlord? Lots of people's landlord. You know the trick, A4. I don't own the flats I rent out. Who owns them? The council. That's the trick. When the people the council rent them to move on, those people rent out to me. The council never know. And who do you rent them out to? There's lots of entrepreneurs that want to take advantage of prime retail space in the middle of the city. You want to know what you can get in my shops. I uh, didn't say anything. You want to know it for. I know you do. I nodded. Let's say you've got 150 pounds. I could do any of these for you. One hour and half minutes of sex in tower block brothel, including two blows and unlimited cunning, 150 liters of untaxed diesel, one bud from a cannabis factory, eight pairs of pumas, one reactivated gun, one fake passport, two fake driving licenses, or half an attack trained pit bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> He was enjoying this. <laughs> I wish I hadn't asked, I said. You live a sheltered life. If you come back after you've had a good bouncy sexiness and we do some coke. <laughs> I left feeling like the barriers were back up. Step six. When she is picked, you must be ready. Stop bumming that fag <laughs> and prepare for imminent action. When she starts towards the machine, you need to make your move. From your position, it should be simplicity for you to reach the machine before her. The mark checks her wallet and looks around. This is my time. This is my moment. I stride out of the shadows towards the machine just as she makes for it. But I've timed my move perfectly. And she's already deferred to my position by the time we join the queue. She never even questioned my getting here just before her. There's a guy in front of me tapping buttons and inspecting the screen. I've got time to pull the script from my pocket and scan down to the next step. Step seven. You get out 150 pound cash. Not 20 pound or 40. Not a four pack of Stella and frozen San Marco pizza amount. You get that 150 pound because the classification of lady that you want to be enamored with you needs to know that you can buy two grams of Coke and get a taxi home. <laughs> That's the man you are. Two grams of Coke and a foxy fucking taxi home man. When you push that button and your card has popped out, that's it. You're done. You walk right away from that machine like a man who got important fucking things to do. Got that A4. You leave and let that motherfucking money flow out of the machine just as she is presenting herself to it. And she will cogitate to herself. Who is this man with the massive pig balls who released 150 big ones from the machine? He is the sort of man who can buy two grams of coke and afford a taxi home. <laughs> I'm at the cash point. I'm pushing the buttons, but it feels beyond counterintuitive to take my card and leave. People talk doing it all the time, but I can honestly say that I've never even come close. But this is the whole point. This is why I'm here. I can feel her behind me. Maybe stood a bit closer than you would expect the next person in the queue to be. Maybe she already feels the connection between us. I could just lean back and touch her. 
The machine beeps. My card pops out. I look at it. Hesitation flickers in my mind. Then Mariusz's voice shouts, Do it! in my head. And I do. Step eight. Walk away. Do not look back. Just keep walking until she comes to you. And when she does, you make sure you know what you're going to say. I know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, thanks. It's nice to know there's still some good people in the world, people who do the right thing and don't take advantage of others. Hey, uh, what do you say I buy you a drink? Uh, just to show my appreciation. And she'll say, that would be lovely. <laughs> Give me a look that acknowledges what we both feel. Just like Mariusz's grandfather, we both already feel it in our loins. I hear footsteps behind me. My shoulders tense. I fold up the script and stick it in my pocket, hesitating only briefly to consider that there was no step nine. A hand taps me on the arm and I turn round to face her. She's even prettier than I thought. My heart leaps. You forgot this, she says in a Polish accent. I look down. She's not handing me my money. She's handing me a note. I take it and then she begins to walk off, but I say, she smiles over her shoulder and then turns away. I open the note. Step now. <laughs> I'm sorry here for. I like you. So cogitate on this list. Because that is what this is. Think of all the things you could have had for 150 pounds. <laughs> now you saw like an eagle. But you take my advice and soon, soon you will fly like a dolphin. <laughs>